It's been a hot minute, that is for sure. Stick around to the end and I will give you a little life update on what's been going on with me during my break and how there may be another one coming up soon. Ahoy travelers, it's Amy here with your weekly cruise news roundup and my thoughts on some of the biggest stories of the week, including Princess's new price guarantee along with their upfront pricing and John Heald debunks multiple rumors. If you are constantly checking to see if your cruise fare has gone down in hopes of getting some onboard credit, Princess Cruises has introduced its better than best price guarantee for 2025 and 26 itineraries that you might find beneficial. Available on cruises booked between July 1st and September 2nd, guests who find a lower price for their cruise and stateroom type prior to their final payment princesses will match that price and give them 120% of the price difference as onboard credit. This is something that I wish they would make permanent, but if you are planning to book a cruise soon, especially on princess, you're going to want to take advantage of this deal and try to book within those dates. I know I am as we're looking at booking a 2026 princess cruise. So while we're on the topic of princess, they've also announced that beginning July 1st, their advertised pricing will include taxes, fees, and port expenses. Now, while our cruising neighbors across the pond see full fees when they book with European baselines, Americans know that the price you see is just a fraction of what the cruise is actually going to end up costing you. Due to a recent consumer protection law in California that's forcing transparency on upfront advertised pricing, Princess has chosen to go ahead and implement that transparency now and to do so for all cruisers, not just those that are residents of California. Now, they're not the only cruise line doing this. Royal Caribbean International has stated that they plan to do so for all their cruise lines and Carnival Cruise Line plans to do the same for all the rest of their cruise lines as well. So this is going to mean that when you see that advertised cruise price, it's going to be a lot closer to your initial final cost. So expect to see those advertised prices going up. Now, optional fees and charges are not required to be shown, but obviously they're optional. So things like gratuities will still need to be added along with any extras like drink packages, especially dining excursions, or if you're like me, you like to pick your stateroom you may find that some areas of the ship cost extra. Now, I for one am glad that this is the direction cruise lines are headed. It is frustrating comparing and pricing cruises when you have to go most of the way through the booking process to get a more accurate idea of cost. Now, if cruise lines would cut out the gratuities and just add that to the cruise fare, I think most cruisers would be happier. So what do you think about this change to cruise fare advertised pricing? Is this going to make it easier for you to choose your next cruise? Let me know. Now, I always love seeing how John Heald handles the damage control that's necessary when some overzealous, often ignorant cruisers start spreading false rumors about Carnival Cruise Line. So recently, there have been some doozies. The most recent one had John Heald putting out fires after someone insisted that passports were required for Alaskan cruises. Now, maybe this person didn't know Alaska was part of the U.S. I've seen those man on the street interviews. It's possible, but hopefully it was due to all Alaskan cruises needing to make a stop in Canada, but who knows. On his Facebook page, John Heald said, Over the last week or so, I have been answering multiple questions on the subject of an alleged passport requirement for Alaska. Someone had posted on social media that everyone must have a passport to cruise to Alaska, and yep, many believed her. I responded over and over again to everyone saying that this was not correct. So despite the fact that you don't need a passport to take an Alaskan cruise, I still recommend everyone who cruises do so with a passport. It may not be necessary on closed loop cruises leaving out of the U.S., but it is still the smartest way to travel when you're going to be visiting other countries, which you will be. So my question to you is, have you ever cruised without a passport? Let me know. I have not. I know sometimes people who cruise a lot may have to because they're getting their passport renewed. And so they have to go ahead and use their birth certificate. 
but let me know in the comments what you do. Now, Mr. Heald also had to address the false rumor that replacement sign and sale cards cost $5. And that is not true. If you lose your card, go down to guest services and they're going to replace them for free. Have you ever lost your card? Now, I've not lost one, but we have had them not work and had to go get them fixed. And one time mom's fell off her lanyard, the lanyard broke. And surprisingly, it was still on the ground when we went back a few minutes later. So we didn't actually have to get that replaced. So what is the craziest false rumor that you've ever heard when it comes to cruising? There's been some doozies. Before we get into story time on why I have been out of commission for two months, if you enjoy this video and maybe even learn something, consider subscribing with the notification bell on so you don't miss out on any future posts. Well, it, it's definitely been a while and I'm glad to be back. Although it was honestly hard to get back into the swing of things and prepping this video. Not only did I take a break from making videos, but honestly, I kept, took a break from even keeping up with the cruise community altogether. And I know that's probably a shocker to a lot of people because usually I really like to keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on in cruising. As some of you may know, the reason I took a break was due to medical issues. I had spent weeks not feeling well and basically not doing much more than sitting in my recliner trying to find a comfortable position. So this went on for several weeks while waiting for surgery. And during that time, I just couldn't concentrate enough to even read or watch TV. Like I couldn't even concentrate to, to watch TV. It was, it was bad. The pain and then the pain caused nausea and it was just working on the channel was just not in the cards during that time, nor was even keeping up with what was going on in the cruise world. Literally most of the day, I just sat there and flicked through Instagram because the 30 seconds of was about all my brain could handle at a time. So this was all occurring, of course, while waiting for laparoscopic surgery to fix the problem. Unfortunately, when the doctor came into my recovery room after surgery, I found out that they weren't actually able to completely fix the issue with surgery. And now I have to have a more invasive and complicated surgery. So that was so disappointing. I mean, it was super disappointing, but during that time after surgery, just recovery was tougher and took longer than I expected. I mean, they tell you laparoscopic surgery, it's non-invasive and are less invasive and has quicker recovery, which I guess it does, but mine was three full weeks before I really was out of pain. And since it was abdominal surgery, sitting up straight during that time for more than just a few minutes at a time was really painful. So this is why I held off making content. And I'd hoped that I would be able to have surgery and then a week later come back, but I just wasn't really possible. And it's only been early this week that I've been feeling like myself again. Now I have another surgery pending and it's at the end of next month in July, which doesn't really give me a lot of time to recoup before our cruise to Norway <sighs> or our cruise around Norway. We're flying into Germany and then we will cruise around Norway. So my only options were a short recovery time before vacation because we're talking less than four weeks, my just a couple days less, but it my surgery's at the end of July, my vacation's at the end of August. So I could either do that or I could wait until after vacation and potentially find myself having all those same complications that I had before my previous surgery. And now I'm having them overseas. So I'm hoping that everything goes well with this surgery, that recovery's quick, and that I can still enjoy our time exploring various places in Europe even if it means that I may be less mobile with less stamina than I would usually have. Until this is all over, there's still a chance that I could have the pain and nausea could come back at any time, but I'm hoping that it doesn't and I can get videos out regularly. However, I will most likely still gonna be out of commission for a while after this upcoming surgery. So hopefully that gives everyone a little insight into what's been going on in my world. I really appreciate those of you who reach out and asked how I was doing and those that sent me well wishes. So sweet of everybody. Well, are you ready for more information on cruising? Why not stick around and check out this video 
and then come back for more information designed to help you have an amazing cruise. Have a blessed week, everyone.